week, as the Democratic leader has indicated, the Senate will finally get the opportunity to vote on the bill that House and Senate Democrats have both made their number one priority for the entire Congress. S-1 is a bad bill filled with bad ideas. And I've been crystal clear about opposing it from the very beginning. But for Democrats themselves, coming up with a compelling rationale for this unprecedented political power grab has been a long and winding road. It started back in 2019. Then our friends on the left were still trying to wrap their heads around a stunning defeat in the 2016 presidential election. So the Speaker of the House billed H.R. 1 as a major overhaul for what her party concluded was a profoundly broken democracy. Then 2020 changed everything. A Democrat actually won the White House. I guess our democracy wasn't broken after all. This time, apparently federal authorities just needed urgent protection from state legislatures running their own elections. So Madam President, we're talking about fundamentally the very same bill, and one thing's for certain, major overhaul doesn't even begin, begin to describe it. The awful guts are all in there. There's the plan to forcibly rewrite large portions of the 50 states' respective election laws. And the plan to create new publicly funded accounts, not for building roads and bridges, expanding rural broadband, or fighting the opioid epidemic, just piles of federal dollars going to yard signs, balloons, and TV ads for candidates at least half of Americans disagree with. There's the plan to trash a decades-old bipartisan consensus on the right way to call balls and strikes on elections and turn the even split of the Federal Election Commission into a partisan majority. And the one to give the majority new and broader tools for chilling the rights of citizens to engage in political speech it doesn't like. It's such a radical proposal that even prominent voices on the left have urged caution. Lawyers from the ACLU, no less, have sounded the alarm on its proposed encroachment on free speech. One liberal expert went further, saying that if Democrats think their bill is, quote, essential to secure democracy, they are self-deceived or deceitful. And voters themselves are hardly convinced. When asked about election policies like voter ID, large, large majorities consistently come down on the opposite side of Washington Democrats. And the bill is so transparently optimist, opportunistic. Democrats' spin has failed to even unite their own party here in the Senate. It's a massive takeover of our election system with a fill-in-the-blank rationale. Nobody is fooled, and next week, the Senate will reject it. 